Okay, so you did it. You took the plunge, you moved away from VMware, and now you're running on the awesome open source power of Proxmox. You get your virtual machines migrated over, you fire them up, and something's just not quite right. It just feels weird. Well, let's solve that little mystery together. And that's really the heart of it, isn't it? I mean, the VM is technically running, you can log in, but it's just not cooperating with the host. It's one of those subtle, super frustrating issues that can make you pull your hair out. So what is really going on here? If any of this looks familiar to you, then you are absolutely in the right place. Maybe you're staring at the Proxmox summary and there's no IP address. Or maybe when you try to shut down a VM, it feels less like a shutdown and more like you're just yanking the power cord. Or your backups, they keep failing and you have no idea why. These aren't just random glitches, they're all symptoms of the exact same single and very often overlooked problem. And here's the good news. This is not some deep fundamental flaw with Proxmox. It doesn't mean your migration was a failure. Nope, you're just missing one small but completely critical piece of the puzzle that lets your VM and your host talk to each other the way they're supposed to. So let's go ahead and meet that missing piece. This is the unsung hero of a good Proxmox setup. It's the one thing that almost everyone, especially people coming over from the VMware world, totally forgets about. And this slide right here, this is the core of the whole misunderstanding. See, in VMware, you're used to one single thing, VMware tools. You install that one package and it does everything. Proxmox, on the other hand, it splits that job in two. You've got the Vertio drivers, which are all about raw performance for your disks and network, and then you have a completely separate thing, the QMU guest agent, which is purely for communication and control. And this is exactly why it's so easy to miss. Most modern operating systems already have the Vert IO drivers built right in. So you move your VM over, it boots up, the network connects, the disks are there, you think you're done, but you've only got half of the solution working. The whole smart communication layer is just missing. So what is this agent exactly? Well, the easiest way to think about it is like a translator. It's this tiny little service that you install inside your VM's operating system. It opens up a direct line of communication, which lets the Proxmox host politely ask the VM things like, hey, what's your IP address? Or could you please shut down cleanly now? And the moment you install it, the payoff is huge. All those weird symptoms we just talked about, gone. The IP address magically shows up in the Proxmox UI. Shutdown commands actually work gracefully. Proxmox can now tell the VM to freeze its file system for a second before a backup, which gives you perfect, consistent copies. It is the key to making your VMs feel like first-class citizens in your Proxmox setup. And hey, if you've forgotten this step before, you are in very good company. As this user points out, it's almost a rite of passage. Most people only realize they missed it when things start acting up. So don't feel bad, we've all been there. All right, so now that we know what the problem is, how do we get it right from the very beginning? Let's walk through the definitive pre-flight checklist for a perfect migration that's gonna save you a ton of headaches later. Okay, before we even look at the checklist, here is the single most important tip I can give you. Get rid of VMware tools while the VM is still running on VMware. Trust me on this. If you forget and try to do it later on Proxmox, the uninstaller can break, leaving you to manually hunt down registry keys and services. It's a mess, do it first. Okay, here it is, the roadmap to a perfect migration. Now, notice how it's broken up. The first three steps, this is crucial. They all happen before you even leave VMware. You're gonna attach the Vert IO ISO to the VM, then you'll uninstall the old VMware tools, and then you'll install the new Vert IO guest tools. That one file takes care of both the drivers and the agent. After that, you import the VM into Proxmox. Now you just have two quick things to do on the host side. Just check a box in the VM's options to enable the guest agent, that's it. On the next boot, everything will just work, and you can swap the network card over to Vert.io for that extra performance boost. Now, clicking through that whole checklist is perfectly fine if you're just moving one or two VMs, but what if you're moving dozens? Or what if you just really, really love efficiency? Well, it's time to level up our game. Let's be real, when you're managing an entire infrastructure, doing this by hand for every single machine is not just slow, it's a recipe for mistakes. This is where automation becomes your absolute best friend. You can totally script this entire process. Just imagine taking those first few steps, uninstalling VMware tools, installing the Virtio package, and having a tool like Ansible or even a simple PowerShell script do it for you automatically across your entire fleet of VMs. 
it turns a long, tedious process into a single, reliable command. And hey, while we're talking about pro-level moves, here are a few more quick tweaks for you. In your VM's hardware settings, change the machine type to Q35, it gives you better compatibility with modern stuff. Set the CPU type to host to pass through all your host CPU's features for a nice little performance bump. And one last thing, remember, when you change the network card type to VertIO, the operating system sees a brand new network card, so you'll probably have to fix your IP address or update your DHCP reservations. So let's bring this all home. It might feel like we've gone over a lot of small details, but honestly, it all boils down to one simple, incredibly powerful fix. I absolutely love this analogy I came across. Think about it. VMware is a lot like an automatic car. It holds your hand, it bundles everything together for you, it makes things easy. Proxmox is more like a manual transmission. It gives you way more control, more power, more flexibility, but it expects you to know when to shift the gears. It's not harder to drive, it just requires you to be a bit more deliberate and pay attention to the details. And the QEMU guest agent? That is the most important detail of them all. Forgetting it leaves you with a VM that just feels clunky and disconnected, but installing it? That's what makes everything click into place. It's the final touch that makes your migrated VM feel truly at home in Proxmox. Ultimately, this whole thing is a perfect example of how one tiny, often overlooked component can be the difference between total frustration and absolute perfection. And it really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other little unsung heroes are just hiding in plain sight in the technology you use every single day?